Hey folks, and we're back. So, as I mentioned previously, we're gonna build the drums that we'll use for this song. As usual, I'll be using my favorite samples, which come from the Metal Factor Studios, uh, specifically the Alien Custom Kit. I've reviewed this on the channel before, so you can check out the cards later and watch that video. I'm also gonna be using the symbols found inside the Vita Imata Oceana Guy Custom Kit. Again, check the cards, because I've also reviewed that. So first things first, uh, we need to load up Contact 5, which I've already done. You'll notice that my Contact 5 came preloaded with 16 stereo outs. I highly recommend you guys to set up a template for that as well. Huge time saver. So I've got the Alien Kick, the Snare, and the Toms. I do have an extra snare drum in here. It's the Insubordinate Snare, and it's literally nothing but bottom end punch that we're going to be blending into the main snare shortly during the mixing phase. You can find this snare in the Contact Instrument Bundle Pack, also from Metal Factory Studios. Now I prefer to bounce my drums completely dry from contact and process them in the DAW. So let's move all the faders down, removing any reverb or room settings that were there. Also let's go ahead now and name all the outputs and assign them correctly. One thing to note is that in Kickbox Sonar I'm able to use a MIDI Omni track, which allows me to use a single MIDI track but have separate audio outputs. It's super convenient. Okay, now let's get going with the symbols. Uh, I personally like a ton of symbols, so I'll be importing almost all of the ones that are offered in the Vita Imana kit. I'm just not a big fan of bells, so I won't be bringing those in. We now have all the drums and symbols in contact fully routed. Uh, this is the best time to double check that they actually are routed correctly. So just go ahead and play each piece of the kit and make sure it plays in the corresponding audio track in the DAW. Everything appears solid for me, so let's just go ahead and move into the DAW, uh, rename the tracks, pan them, and arrange the MIDI notes to match our drum kit. Now you may be wondering why this isn't a drum map, and the answer to that is back in 1999, I didn't start writing drums with a drum map, I just did it right here in the PRV like you see now, and I just got used to it, so that's how I do it. So at this point, I'm going to go through the entire song, move the toms and cymbals around to match the right notes, and then we will go to humanizing the drums. So when I humanize, I actually don't go off the grid that much, but I do try to have quite a bit of velocity variation. There's a cool mini plugin that comes with Sonar. It's, it's just called Velocity, actually, and it, it's stock. And with this plugging, I can generate velocity variations without having to do it manually. So for example, with the kick drum, basically I just make sure it's not completely flat and level, um, just so that it's not annoying. I'll keep the level around 120, 125, you know, during its highest peak point, depending on how it sounds with the sample. With the snare, I do actually keep this pretty uniform, uh, except for really fast parts that will fluctuate the velocity a bit more. I like to keep the velocity settings around 115 to 120, again, depending on the part of the song and the sample. Toms are all done manually, and these will have some pretty drastic velocity changes to ensure they sound more realistic. The reason for this is because they are played in quick succession, so the ear will pick up on it right away when they're, you know, really fake sounding. If the snare drum is actually part of the fill as well with the toms, I'll also edit the velocity the same way. Another thing to point out is if toms are played at the same time, I will offset one of the toms like by one or two milliseconds, again to make it sound more realistic, because even a really good drummer does not hit two things at the exact same moment in time. Ride cymbal and hi-hat are treated kind of the same in that I bring their velocity down and I randomize them quite a bit. Uh, in slower sections of the song, I'll actually match or I'll make the level of the hi-hat or the ride higher every time a snare is hit because a real drummer will play with more accent on the snare on the cymbals. It's a great way to make the part sound more realistic as well. All crash cymbals, chinas, splashes, I keep those at 127 because with this library that's how they sound best. Now that that's all completed, we have to sit and listen to the drums carefully. I recommend that you just listen to the drums, take your hand off the keyboard and the mouse and just listen. Don't get distracted, don't look at your phone, don't look at Facebook, just listen to the drums. If something is not quite right or sticks out, you probably need to fix it. The reason for this is because we're going to bounce these to audio tracks, and when you bounce them, there's no more you know, messing around with them in MIDI. So to bounce them, we simply do that by selecting all the tracks here with the MIDI track, which will select the contact instrument, which is the main output. Then we go up here, we select uh, bounce to tracks. 
So uh, let's see, only the selected tracks. I don't need the entire mix. No effects. Ah, no. No dithering. All right, looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and bounce these. Great, here are all the tracks. All we have to do now is move them up to the original audio files. Or excuse me, audio tracks. Now that we have these, uh, we don't need the contact instrument or the MIDI track anymore. So we can actually delete the contact instrument over here in the synth rack. Um, we can, and I do not delete the tracks that are connected to it because I want to move the MIDI myself. I like to create an archive folder that I keep in the DAW. And I just move my MIDI tracks there just as a safety net in case I really screw something up and I need to like rebounce. I have the MIDI track here just as a safety net. Okay, all the drums are bounced out and now ready for processing. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip silence the cymbals uh, in any big spaces in the in the shells, and I'm going to manually gate the toms. All right, finished with strip silencing and gating. So basically, we do the strip silencing to free up CPU so that the computer's not reading empty information and taking up CPU. And manual gating on toms is exactly what it sounds like. You you split and put a manual fade. Uh, it always works better and it just sounds more natural than when using a gate. So that basically covers up drums up to this point. In the next video, we're going to go over getting the bass guitar ready to go. If you think this is a cool series, consider a like rating if it's helpful for you. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video in the series. And, you know, better yet, hit that bell symbol so you get an email notification when I upload the video. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.